Then at that time, he looked at Vinod Bihari Brahmachari and he said, Vinod, he will do all these things. So at that time, Srila Prabhupada predicted, and actually this came true, because later on, after a few years, uh, Srila Vinod Bihari Brahmachari left his studies. He was excelling so much in university, but he left all of this behind, and th understanding that this human form of life is so rare, and to get the opportunity of having Sadguru in this lifetime comes after many, many lifetimes. So he decided that he would give up his education, and at that time he came to the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada and surrendered himself there. And from the very moment that he came, he was constantly engaged as the most intimate servitor of Srila Prabhupada, and he engaged as the complete director and superintendent of all the Gaudiamats. As the Gaudiamat preaching expanded, he took charge under the direction of Srila Prabhupada, and saw to the upkeep of all the lands, of all the temples, even the Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur Institute School, he became the director of this. So there is one very beautiful story that Srila Gurudev tells every year when we go to visit the original Sri Chaitanya Mat. There there is a very beautiful uh, jackfruit tree and uh, when we go there Srila Gurudev often tells this pastime that when they had gone one uh, Gormandala Parikrama, they had gone to the mat of Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj in Navadvip Dham to pay their obeisances there. And from his lotus mouth, they heard a, an incident that he described to them of the first time that he himself had come to Mayapur Dham. So when he came, the whole Gormandala Parikrama was taking place and he had gone to the Jogpeet and to Sriva Sangam and now he came to the Chandrasekhar Bhavan. And when he came inside of Chaitanya Mat, he came upon this one uh, sight of a white clad brahmachari sitting on a chair with his feet up resting on a, on a table in front of him with his arms uh, folded and his eyes closed and kind of leaning back in his chair like this, deeply absorbed in some kind of thought. Huh? And he was sitting underneath this jackfruit tree. So, Srila Sridhar Maharaj was watching this. Oh, he came, he was uh, not Matvasi, and he was... Uh, As a visitor. Ram, yes, yes. Ramananda. Yes. Yeah. Ramananda. Yes, yeah. Ramananda. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, Shila Maharaj, 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 yes. he was a very Shila Shridhar Maharaj had come from he was he, a householder at that time. He was just studying law. Yes. Law student and he was also from a very aristocratic Brahmin family, Bhattacharya family in Bengal. So he came and he saw this site and he, what he saw was that many brahmacharis and, and white-clad persons, they were coming, all saffron and white, and they were all offering obeisances to him. Yeah, I'm getting to that. <laughs> they were offering obeisances to him, speaking a couple words, and he would acknowledge with his eyes closed, and then they would go away. And then suddenly one sannyasi came, and he paid his dandavat pranams to him. And then he opened his eyes for a few moments without paying his respects back just acknowledging his, that he was present and he spoke some words to him and then the sannyasi uh, paid his respects and he went away so uh, Ramananda, Vashila Sridhar Maharaj at that time Ramananda he was looking at this and he thought what is this? this is a very amazing thing that sannyasis and brahmacharis and all are coming to this very young white clad brahmachari he must be some very amazing person so at that time he met Srila uh, Vinod Bihari Brahmachari and they had some conversations and from that time onwards they were the very most intimate friends. But this shows, just one little example, this shows how exalted was Srila Vinod Bihari Brahmachari. Many times Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur wanted to give him sannyas because he had given sannyas to a number of his leading disciples. But on two occasions uh, when he decided that he wanted to give him sannyas, even the cloth and the danda had been prepared. But the other uh, devotees, the other disciples who were leading disciples in the Gaudiya Mat, 
they told to Srila Prabhupada that, oh, it will, it will not be good. How will everything be run? If he takes sannyas, then everything will be ruined because he's so perfectly, he's taking care uh, as the superintendent of all the Gaudiya Mats. So please don't give him sannyas now. So in this way, he didn't accept externally the sannyas uh, order from Srila Prabhupada. But one very famous incident in Sri Navadvip Dham Parikrama, in 1926, I think it was. So at that time, in Navadvip Dham, there were so many uh, very envious caste Goswamis and smarta Brahmanas who were very much uh, up in arms against Srila Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati because he was preaching Divya Varnashram Dharma. That it is not simply by birth that someone is a Brahmana, but by guna karma vibhagasha, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, chatur varanyam mayashristam guna karma vibhagasha. So in this way they felt very threatened because they had the monopoly and so many people were coming to them and giving so many donations and they were maintaining their livelihood just by dint of being born in some Brahmin family lineage. So, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati became the target of their aggression. And they decided, in such an envious way, that they wanted to harm him and even take his life. So they made one plot, and they even paid off the local police in the area of Navadvip Dam. They had a plan that they were going to attack him in the middle of his Navadvip Parikrama. So there was a very huge Parikrama party coming in Sri Navadvip Dam, near uh, uh, Paramatala, Prodhamaya Mandir in the center of the township there, Kulia Gram. So at that time, Srila Prabhupada was sitting with the whole assembly of Vaishnavas. They had arrived there. And then suddenly, from the sky in all directions, on the rooftops, they were throwing down so many stones, sharp stones, and even broken bottles, thundering down hundreds and thousands of pieces. And suddenly, the whole crowd looked up and they began to scatter in every single direction to save their own life. But, one person did not run to save his own life. Who was that? Sri Vinod Bihari Brahmachari. He, very quickly, he grabbed his Gurudev, Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and ran into one open doorway that was, he knew that this doorway was the place of a person that was a supporter. And immediately he ran inside of the house and closed the door behind him. Then when he was inside of there, he told, please, Srila Prabhupada, you please give me your sannyas dress and I will take your identity and you take my white cloth. Very safely then, I'll be able to bring you back to my poor dam, unharmed like this. So at that moment, Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati gave his sannyas dress and he handed him his danda in his hands. And then he was taken to safety in Mayapur Dam. And in this way, Srila Vinod Bihari Brahmachari risked his life to save the life of his Guru Dev. So, he is known as Kriti Ratna. Kriti Ratna is the title that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati gave to him. Because he was the jewel of performers who do the most glorious activities. We cannot even begin to recount in this very uh, short gathering all the wonderful episodes within his life, all the astonishing activities that he performed during the time of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and after establishing Sri Gaudiya Vedanta Samiti and completely restarting, as Gurudev said, restarting the entire preaching mission that had practically ground to a complete halt. All the printing presses, everything. After Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur left, then, the, then all the preaching was practically stopped. Uh, all throughout India. So, at that time, Srila uh, Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, and also our Srila Prabhupada, at that time householder, Abhai Charanaravinda Prabhu, and one other god brother, they founded Sri Gaudiya Vedanta Samiti together, and they began to restart the whole preaching mission of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shri <laughs> The life and teachings of Maya. So briefly, he will speak. Shantanu.
Brahma Kyan Timarandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshur and Minikam Jaina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Offer my humble obeisances to my spiritual master, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and to Sripad Devi Narayan Maharaj. All wants to see you. Better you can come here. And also my humble obeisances and many thanks <coughs> to Sripad Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj. But again, I have to thank Gurudev um, very recently, along with the help of some other devotees here. I've had the pleasure to work on a very important book. Uh, many of you know this book uh, called Vaishnav Vijay. Uh, this book was originally um, printed. I think it was in 1964 by, uh, by Sripad uh, Bhaktivedanta Vaman Goswami Maharaj. And this book is a compilation of essays that Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj wrote. Uh, <clears throat> this book will be published quite soon, and when you have a chance to read it, it will be an amazement to you all. Uh, it was an amazement to me because um, what became clear is how much our Guru Varga is actually working together to help the conditioned souls and to promote Rupanuga Vaishnavism to the entire world, but especially uh, how they're working together to defeat the bane of Mayavad impersonal philosophy. Uh, I'm sure that many of you, like me, have had at different times uh, difficulty in understanding exactly what Mayavad philosophy is, where it comes from, and how uh, much of a negative influence it is on our world today. And this book is a jewel because it actually gives us the complete history and philosophy of how this Mayavad uh, philosophy has developed over the years in such a scholarly way by referencing not only the uh, life of Shankara <coughs> but also uh, Buddhist philosophy and how the two philosophies are actually in essence, very much non-different. So I'm, uh, despite being a humble editor and uh, looking to clarify uh, a few grammatical uh, errors in, in the translation, I'm not very qualified to really speak at length about the book. There are many more senior Vaishnavas here who can explain it in, in greater detail. But let me say that um, in essence, the book will be, uh, by the way, will be available in uh, Navadvi Parakram. It's being published now. And uh, I guess it's taken about 70 years for a bona fide copy of it to finally be made available in the English language, thanks to Srila Gurudev. And when you read this book, uh, it will put into context um, just what a very special chance we have by associating with the pure devotees and understanding how much God is a person and how much in the spiritual sense we are all people, we are all persons, and how the beauty of the relationship that comes between us and Krishna uh, is being made available by the Vaishnavas and the Vaishnavacharyas. So thank you very much. Um, I'm sure there are more qualified people to speak at length about this, so thank you for the chance to address you. But 
Don't touch. Other have told. After that. <laughs> Om Gyanati Marandhasya Gyanandana Salaka Chakshuran Vilitam Jena Tasmai Sri Guravi Nama Nama Tama Guru Padapadva My Holy Master Om Vishnu Pada Shoda Satsi Shimad Rupa Nugatari Varya Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Secondly, after my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Parama Guru Dev Nityalila Pravishtam Vishnu Parash Todra Satsi Shimad Bhakti Pragyan Keshu Goswami Maharaj. And after my pranam to my great great grandfather Guru Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Satsari Thakur and all gurus in our Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And so, thirdly, I have my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas, especially my Pujaniya Guru Jana, my worshipable superiors, the disciples of Nityalila Pravishtam Mishnu Pada, Stodhisat Shishimad, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Nanyaji Dandi Padgan, and all my very dear God brothers and God sisters, and the assembled guests. <coughs> Though I am unqualified, Srila Gurudev ordered me to speak a few words in, in glorification of Srila Bhakti Pragya and Kesha Maharaj and taking the remnants of all the exalted Vaishnavas and Vaishnavi who has who have been speaking before my before myself. So you know that Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj is very prominent Acharya in our Sampradaya. But what is it that makes Hmm? A Vaishnav, a great Acharya. Hmm? The great Acharya is that person who is a Sat Shishya, bona fide disciple. Yasya Deve Prabhakti Yata Deve Tatagaro Tasyati Katita Hyata Prakashante Mahatmanaha. Only unto that person who has implicit, unwavering faith in the lotus feet of Sadhguru, only unto that person are all the confidential purports of Vedshastra revealed automatically within their hearts. So from the very beginning, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshamaraj manifested a supernatural dedication and faith in the lotus feet of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sazari Thakur Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. From the very beginning, when he took shelter of Srila Prabhupada, mm -hmm. when Srila Prabhupada gave him Diksha Mantras, mm -hmm. Gopal Mantra and Kam Gayatri, after his initiation, you know that usually after initiation everyone feels very joyful. Mm -hmm. You can see they are smiling and they seem to be very happy. But after receiving initiation from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sazari Thakur, at that time Vinod Brahmachari, mm -hmm. he looked somewhat upset hmm? and he looked towards his Gurudev and he said Gurudev hmm? is it that you will not uh, give me Guru Mantra and Guru Gayatri or will I have to receive this from someone else then Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sasari Thakur became very very uh, happy he was overjoyed and for the first time he gave Guru Mantra and Guru Gayatri he had not given before so the fact that this mantra is coming down to us today, this is by the causes mercy of Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj. This is a very important contribution in the life of every single devotee uh, made by Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj. Because he understood what was the essence of spiritual life. And after his initiation, he began to serve Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sazari Thakur with his complete energy. Mm -hmm. Once it so happened that the course of the Ganges River was moving and there was a great danger that the Samadhi Mandir of Srila um, Gorkishodas Babaji Maharaj 
hmm, would be all washed into the Ganga. So at that time, because of this danger, Srila, that time Vinod Brahmachari, he went with some and at once, without any effort, uh, without any hesitation, Vinod Brahmachari gave the answers, gave the replies. So he's vast learning and many qualities. Oh, how he was deeply absorbed in bhajan. He hid these things from the world. And many could not understand how great he was. In 1937, towards the very end of the pastimes of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sazari Thakur, he called his disciples around them, him and he gave them his final instructions. He told them, hmm, now you should understand that time is very short. Our life is very short. So we should try to give all of our energy into Harinam Sankirtanam. Hmm? Always there should be Harikata and Harinam Sankirtanam. Try to cooperate together for, to fulfill the mission of Rupa and Raghunath. Hmm? The only goal in our life is Adadanas Tenam Dantar Idam Yache Puna Puna Srimad Rupa Padam Dulisham Janma Janmani Birth after birth to become the foot dust of Sri Rupa. He gave these instructions and he also said some prophetic statements. He said that in the future many formidable adversities will come, many problems and many difficulties. But in the face of all types of difficulties, you should go on uh, preaching the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And shortly after that, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sazari Thakur disappeared from this world. And then in Gaudiya Math, many problems came and there was so much fighting between the prominent disciples. And at that time, Vinod Brahmachari found it unbearable to um, stay within the society where many were fighting over power and position and buildings and land. And without arguing over the property of his Gurudev, he just walked out without taking any money, any uh, property, without taking any facility with nothing in his pocket, he left. But he left with the mission, with the lotus feet of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sadari Thakur, very firmly placed within his heart. And very soon, though his qualities were not manifest before, now he manifests his Acharya Lila, his pastime of being a very great, powerful and prominent Acharya. The printing of so many magazines had come to a halt. And he acquired a printing press and began printing the magazines again. The Navadi programmer had stopped, but single-handedly he went to, from devotee to devotee and asked them, please take part in this parakrama. And with the help of other god brothers also, he traveled here and there and invited everyone to come for the Navadi parakrama. But he had no money, he had no way to arrange all the facilities for the people. So he took a very big risk and took a loan of 20,000 rupees, which was a, a, a large sum of money in those days. And he invited everyone to come for the programma and took them everywhere and told very sweet Harikata in all of the places. And then at the end of the programma, he requested them, Oh, uh, do, uh, how are you going back to your village? Are you going by train? Do you need some money? Oh, I will give you the train fare. And he individually went to the different people on the programmer in a very humble mood and even offered to pay their train fare returning home. But he requested from them one dakshina, one donation. And that is, if you have undergone any slight inconvenience or difficulty during this programmer, I simply beg you that when you return to your village, that you'll not say anything about that. But rather, you should tell everyone that it was very comfortable, very enjoyable. And there was very beautiful Harikata, and in this way more will come. And so, from these humble beginnings, Navdi Prakrama started again. And after a few years it became a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, now twenty thousand uh, devotees. All by the blessings and the mercy of Srila Bhakti Pratya and Keshav Goswami. At that time, a very um, formidable adversity came, as Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sazari Thakur said. Formidable adversities will come, but go on preaching the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, that Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshu Goswami started the magazines, 
and the Prakrama of Navadweep and Brajimandal Prakrama and also all India Prakrama and even in Dwarka and also Ketramandal Prakrama during Purusha Shotan Mas. Though he did all of these things, more importantly, he protected the Siddhanta and the conclusions of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Salzori Thakur, which came under attack from some of his own apparently prominent disciples. Hmm? Who was that? Ananta Vasudev and Sundarananda Vidyavinod. Hmm? Once some disciples, they came to Devananda Goryamat and they had been in Bhag Bazaar, which, was, which had come under the control of Ananta Vasudev. When, when they came... some three. Sri Bhavshadeva. Oh, none of the bad. Sri. One thing, Sri. Hold your part, Ananta.